I have a, a sort of a technical question for you. Hit it. I was interviewing, I don't remember her name, but she was an author, and she had uh, just published her uh, first book. It was a Harry, John, Harry Potter genre style of book. Okay, so mi- middle grade-ish mm-hmm. fantasy. Yeah. She had approached her promotion, her sales, in a formal way from old school, I, I would think. And one of the questions they always ask is, who's your competition? And she identified Harry Potter as her competition. Well, that's ridiculous. I told her, yeah, that's my question. I told her, I don't think Harry Potter is your your uh, your competition because, in order to become interested in your book, they would have to read Harry Potter, and there were only like six books at the time. So when they're done with them, they look for others, and they might find yours. So to start, mm-hmm. there is no competition. Okay. It goes back to that idea of selling books is not a zero sum game. Mm-hmm. It, there's not a, it's not pie. There's not a finite number of books that people are going to buy. Mm-hmm. There are 150 guests at this convention. Probably 80 or 90 of them are authors. Mm-hmm. All of us together can't keep up with 10 avid readers in a year. Mm-hmm. Because an avid reader will read a book a week mm-hmm. or more. Mm-hmm. I'm one of the faster writers that I know. And I can't put out anywhere near the kind of content that an avid reader wants. So there is no competition in selling books. So no one is your competition. You want to look at people who you market to their audience because it's not that you don't want them to buy the Harry Potter books. You want them to buy your book next. When I first met Kevin Hearn, the author of the Iron Druid Chronicles, I met him at a signing for his fourth book. Um, It was in Charlotte. He had never done a signing there before. I had never met him before. I stood in line with everybody else. Mm -hmm. It was my first ever rock star moment, though, Mm -hmm. because as I'm standing in line, someone I've never seen before walks up to me with a copy of my book from that bookstore and has me autograph that while I'm in line. Mm -hmm. And all of these people are looking around saying, who's that guy? (laughs) And I'm like, I'm famous, bitch. (laughs) Yeah. But I get, up to the, I get up to the front, and I hand him my copy, and I say, hey, it's good to meet you. You made me a lot of money last year. Mm-hmm. He said, really? How did I do that? I said, when people found your book, they found you because they were searching for Jim Butcher books. Mm-hmm. And he said, yep, 100%. Because Butcher had not released a new Dresden Files book in a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Well, Kevin released the first three Iron Druid books in, I think, June, July, and August of that year. They were all completed when he sold them, so they rapid-released the series. So when you went on Jim Butcher's Amazon page for any of the Dresden Files books, the people who bought this also bought. Once you got through the Dresden Files books, the first thing you saw was Kevin Hearn. Mm. Well, then when you clicked on that, you, they usually list about five books that people who bought this also bought. If you went to the first Iron Druid book, the f- first two also bots were books two and three. Hmm. I was the third. <laughs> and I said, yeah, um, I made a lot of money by being in your also bots. Hmm. And he said, that's really awesome. And his mother was with him. Mm-hmm. And she looked up and said, I know your name. I said, that's because you pay way more attention to your son's Amazon page than he does. Uh. She said, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Speaking of Amazon pages, mm-hmm. um, you don't get a complete control over it. But what, uh, I mean, you do put the description up mm-hmm. and the, the image, the cover image, mm-hmm. the uh, editorial chapter. reviews. Yeah, the editorial reviews. You set the length of the sample. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what do people need to be aware of for promotional purposes? Put the copyright at the back. Really? Yeah. Move all of that. When you're building your ebook, mm-hmm. move the copyright to the back. I never would have thought of that. It's a page, and it's a chunk of content that ends up in your sample mm-hmm. that won't make people buy your book. That's true. So when I'm laying out books, I double up the copyright, and there's a copyright page that only gets it created in the print edition, mm-hmm. and then there's another one at the back of all of the content, and that only goes into the ebook edition. Huh. So when you buy the book in print, the copyright page is where you expect it. It's up front. Mm-hmm. 
but when you buy it in the ebook, it doesn't screw up your sample. Okay. So when they click on the re read more, whatever they, it's called, mm -hmm. look inside or something. Right. You don't see the copyright page. You simply see the first chapter. Mm -hmm. Oh, you do the yeah. same with the table of contents? Well, table of contents kind of only exist in ebooks unless you're doing an anthology. Okay. So those have to be there. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, that's that's a quick and that's a quick and easy thing mm -hmm. that people can change that does okay. have an impact. Um, make sure you make a hook. Mm -hmm. Write your book description like you're writing a movie trailer. Mm. You know, people, New York, New York publishers write the shittiest Amazon descriptions. Really? Oh my God, they're terrible. Because they're these big blocks of text without any, they don't pay attention to the HTML. So they don't have enough breaks to make it easy to read. Oh, okay. So it's these giant gray blocks of text and it's all this deep, deep dives into what all of the plot is. Nah, bro. The Black Knight Chronicles is what happens when a couple of comic book nerds get turned into vampires and decide to play Batman by becoming private investigators. <laughs> Boom. That's the hook. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put in a hook. Uh -huh. Make it so that people have to read the book. If you're telling them that this couple of hobbits is going to go on a quest to throw a ring into a volcano and along the way they're going to pick up this elf and this dwarf and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. They're so tired by the time they're reading the description. Nah, your job is get them for 15 seconds and then click buy. What's the dumbest marketing or sales thing you ever did? Oh, God. The least we only effective. have a limited amount of time on this panel. <laughs> well, just one. <sighs> I honestly don't know. because The problem is that mm -hmm. the things that don't work... You forget about them. You, for, you try hard to. Yeah. Or you just don't know that they didn't work. Mm. The running joke is all of fi all 50% of all marketing money is wasted. I just don't know which 50%. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've certainly paid for advertising in different venues that hasn't been mm -hmm. effective. I don't tend to see very much results buying a program ad in a convention program. Mm -hmm. But now I'm promoting a writers conference. Mm -hmm. That has a much better chance of You're running a writers conference. I am. It's called Saga. It's in March of 2020. Where? In Charlotte, North Carolina, mm -hmm. sagaconference.com. Mm -hmm. And it is a professional development conference for genre fiction writers. So people have to pay to get in. Absolutely. Okay. It is just like any other professional development conference. Okay. Richard Cadry and Mary Mancusi are our two guests of honor this year. Mm -hmm. Deb Dixon from Bellbridge Books is our special guest. She's going to be teaching mm -hmm. a goal, motivation, and conflict workshop. Amazon has been uh, allowing people to run ads, ads, mm -hmm. paid ads. Yeah, I run some. Okay. And they'll say something like, you know, the one, one movie title meets something else movie yep. title. Comps. Is that effective? I find it to be. Really? I tell people that Quincy Harker Demon Hunter is like if Supernatural were on HBO mm -hmm. and it was only Dean, no Sam. So twice the F-bombs, half the crime. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I tell people that if you like Ash vs. the Evil Dead and you like Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, then you will like Bubba the Monster Hunter. Hmm. Because when you tell people it's horror comedy, people don't understand what yeah. horror comedy is. Mm -hmm. It's Ash vs. the Evil Dead. Ah, I like that show. I hate they cancel it. Me too. Buy this. It'll make you feel better. <laughs> Guess what? It'll make me feel better too. Yes. <laughs> Buy my stuff. Daddy's got a bar tab. Uh. <laughs> so yeah, I find comps to be very effective. Mm -hmm. I find that I find that quotes from other writers are very seldom mm -hmm. effective unless really? they're huge. Oh. Neil Gaiman sells books. Okay. Um I 
my, my blurb on the cover of a book isn't really going to move the needle on your sales very much. Mm. You'll get more mileage out of me sharing it in my newsletter. Mm -hmm. Or me share, if, and if you ask me, I probably will. Or me sharing your Facebook post. Mm -hmm. Whoopi Goldberg gave me a blurb for Quincy Harker, Demon Hunter. Really? Yeah. She found the books because she listens to a lot of audiobooks. Mm -hmm. And she messaged me out of the blue and said, hey, I'm a big fan. And I was like, yeah, who is this really? <laughs> so she sent me a video, and I was like, holy shit, that's Whoopi Goldberg. Uh -huh. So she gave me a blurb for wow. the Quincy Harker Demon Hunter series. Uh -huh. Whoopi Goldberg's name moves books. Yeah. Yeah. Because she's legit famous. Mm-hmm.